going to just throw that that way because we're not good shot. Dave Weckel here. I'm here on tour co-leading a band with Mike Stern. We are on tour at the moment throughout Europe in uh, this city about an hour outside of Stuttgart that I cannot pronounce. And um, that's what's happening right now with the current uh, state. A lot of what I do certainly is about drumming, but most of it is about music. Musical composition while you play. So it's not, it's not the rudiment and what you, where you put the right or the left hand and, and that bit. I, I never think about that when I play. It's not rudiment based. It's not stroke based. It's melody based. <laughs> so it's a different, it's a different approach than just studying the drums you know the the drums are you know if you just study rudiments and you you just study coordination for the ability to do which is important um, it's very narrow it's very limiting and it doesn't get to the side that we're talking about which is the emotional expressive side that side comes in my opinion from from listening to expressive players that don't play the drums trying to emulate someone like the late, great Michael Brecker on, on the drum set, to play those kind of phrasings, to play those kind of melodies. Sure, we're limited with notes, depending on how many toms you got. But yeah, it, I came to the conclusion that it's composition. It's actually thinking in a compositional state constantly, even where grooves, grooves are concerned not just solo stuff, even the, you know, just all the part to make the song work, not just the drum part. But how does it work with the bass part? How does it work with the guitar part? How does it work with the melody? What's going on? Which part do you follow? Do you follow the melody? Do you follow the rhythm? Do you, you know, it's a difference and it really can make the song work or not. Again, I keep, I'm referencing jazz. I keep going back to you know, the you know, great horn players, you know, big band sections, Latin horn sections, those type of things, you know, to be able to, you know, to think about the kind of time and melody that a Freddie Hubbard played or, you know, like I said, Michael, Michael Brecker, is, those two guys are probably up there as my favorites to reference because I've listened to that so much that, you know, it's the drums with that that, that really kind of floats my boat as it were you know what I mean so it's not just about the drums it's the it's the emotional content that the drums are doing if you listen to Buddy Rich for example it's not what Buddy's doing by himself it's how he treated the song it's how he treated the dynamic 
to support the music that the band was playing. Has nobody ever done that like that in a big band, in my, in my opinion, that way? Because it's my taste. It's, it's on top. It's, you know, the horns. He, he wouldn't allow anything but the horns to be with him. There was no laying back. It was, you know, it's like, look, this is the beat. Play with me. You know, that was his approach. And I, I have the same feeling. It's, uh, I went through a lot of development when I was a kid playing in big bands, and the horns are always dragging, you know. So once we rehearse and we get it, it's like, no, 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 play the time. That's the beat, you know. It's, you know, so... And it's um, so it's so much more involved than than just the drum part or the, or what happens at the drums. It's the music and the composition that you bring into your playing, because that's what the contrast is of sound, dynamics, melody, you know, structure. Do you play piano? A little. A little. Yeah. Not as much as not as much as I would like. In fact, I've started to go back and practice a little more more you know harmony, not not from a technical standpoint in a piano because it's, I mean after playing with somebody like Chick Corea and watching you know all the great keyboard players that I've played with, I forget it. I have no interest to be, you know, um, you know to learn. It's it would take another lifetime to technically get where I would want to be on the piano. So. So no, but but just to to write music, to understand harmony, to you know sit down and read chord changes and be able to do it. Yeah, I'd love to do do that better. Um, picking up the bass again, you know, practicing practicing bass, just to just to get more of the musical aspect into my my world. <laughs> Well, my approach is really about the emotional aspect of it, providing the correct atmosphere for the music and the musicians that I'm playing with. And um, that's really first and foremost. What I try to do and what I, what I teach is to support support the music and figure out how to you know become a valuable commodity to anybody that wants to hire you as a drummer so everything i think that you're talking about sort of goes into all of that but it's a little shallow for me in the sense of what it's all about at the end because yes we're all wowed by uh, you know physical ability me included i mean if i see somebody that that has obviously practiced a long time a lot and has great technique and and uh, and a lot of power and can just do things on the drum set that most of us can't. It's awe-inspiring. Uh, but when we're talking about music, for me, I'm coming from more of an old school tradition where you know it's uh, a lot of a lot of the music I play is jazz oriented. You know, more of the the capability to support that kind of environment of dynamic contrast. Um, different styles within the jazz idiom. Most of the stuff I'm involved in falls under the category of fusion uh, because that's really that's really what I do mostly is fuse a lot of different styles into uh, whatever music we're playing. And those rules are okay because we all agree with that. You know that's what we're doing as a band. What goes into you know getting to that place is a lot. And it, it, in my opinion, it just it takes a lifetime to really develop into the kind of player I certainly want to be. I feel like I'm still, still learning and still developing, you know, after playing for 48 years. So it never ends, and that's the beauty of it. You always kind of are striving to have more command over the instrument to be comfortable in, in a place that allows the music to um, to work. There's all of the technical, you know, uh, abilities that that need to be practiced and developed. There's all of the independence, the coordination as a drummer that needs to be developed. There's the reading aspect. You know, a lot of people say, ah, you don't need to read music. I, you know, for me, I've never done one gig in my life that I hadn't had to read something. So interpret charts uh, and and play the music quickly is an art and it you know the idea is that we survive playing music so 
the more versatile you are, the more um, well-rounded you are, the more depth you have, um, and if you can read, then you're going to get the call versus somebody that can on a last-minute thing that has a stack of music, you know. And then there's the listening aspect, you know, the people that really tune into the history, that go back and listen to um, all the great innovators of, you know, on this instrument that we play. And not only that listening, but also listening to different cultures, different styles. Of course, self-analyzation for me has always been a big part of my development. I've, I've I'm still videotaping every gig, even these days, just to, just to, you know, for documenting some things and also to, to analyze it, seeing how does this, how does this song feel? Is it, you know, am I, am I laying back too much on this tune or too much ahead? You know, and that's, that's what really is, you know, sets the men apart from the boys is being able to adapt to different musical situations and be able to lay back and play with, you know, that group of people that play like that versus playing on top and fitting into that concept. So, of course, listening to yourself is important, but, but I'm talking about, you know, the study, the growing of your, of your own knowledge. And that goes back to jazz, you know, it's, it's, and a lot of people don't want to listen to jazz, you know, it's a lot of places I go to teach, the triplet is, is like missing in a lot of areas of the world. It's not even understood kind of what it is. And, and that comes from, comes from the jazz. So that's, that's my take on it. All the, all the developmental stuff is, is really necessary, of course, but, but it's, to me, the, the drummers that really turn me on are the ones that figure out how to emotionally uh, affect the band and the audience. Those are the ones that, that, in my opinion, are the ones, at least for me, that, that turn me on as a listener. And so that's what I try to, I've always tried to do that based on my learning and, you know, trying to copy and understand what the players that I really liked, what they do and what they have done in the past. Since my study with Freddie Gruber, who was really the most instrumental in uh, getting me to understand about kind of like the laws of nature and the laws of physics and how all that plays into allowing energy to, to flow, a lot has changed for me in, in my approach. Uh, it used to, be, used to be much more physical and I, uh, before Freddie, and I didn't really understand the differences of contact points of grip and all that type of thing in the hands uh, with the sticks and and the idea of really understanding rebound and manipulating bounce and that's kind of what you're talking about the flowing aspect comes from a, a real conscious effort to flow it's the path of least resistance for me to be able to um, you know turn technical things such as the molar technique into uh, part of the the approach um, it's the letting go just enough of the stick so that you aren't death gripping it and choking the sound out of it and and not allowing it to vibrate which is achieved by making sure your whole hand is on the stick as, as much as possible instead of just gripping from the front you know or you know in certain places that that don't allow manipulation with um, with a lot more ease so it's the combination of the bouncing, the flowing motions of, of molar is what it kind of comes down to, uh, and making sure that, that I'm ergonomically set up correct for those things to take place because that's, that's kind of a big part of it, especially with the traditional group. If you spend the time practicing uh, to get command of the sticks and you know and the pedals and you practice the coordinated independence and you're able to do things that you think to do and if you've listened to a lot of great players and a lot of 
styles of music that you copy at first and you try to emulate. Then, at least for me, I was probably in my early 20s when I really started to think about my own image, my own real, like, what do I want to do with this drum set? Not just copying other great players and doing those type of things. And I think, to me, it's a combination of going through the development, gaining the knowledge, spending the time practicing and developing, and making a conscious decision to be creative, to think about what it is you want to do differently, what than somebody else. What, what, what do you think about? You actually got to close your eyes, sit down and think about, okay, what, what, you know, and I have to go through this when I try to write music. It's a light switch. You have to actually switch off the player thing for a minute and, and I have to think about composing. I have to think about melody and structure and the feel that I want to put through the song. So, so it's a similar thing with the drums. It's like, okay, I, if I want to create this certain groove and this feel, um, can I really do that on a standard drum set, or should I try something? I'm really wanting a low pitch on this side of the kit, so let me put a big floor tom over here, or I'm, you know what I mean, just to just to be, you know, creative in a sense of making it yours. Because a lot of us, when we're young, we don't know what to do. We're afraid to not do the right thing musically. At least I was. And again, the more that you know about if somebody starts playing a Montuno bass line you, you, and a percussionist is playing a 2-3 clave, you kind of know what to do. If you have never listened to that music, you're going to be frozen. You're not going to know what to do. So expression is the last thing, or yourself is the last thing that's going to happen because you don't even know what to say. It's like learning a language. You have to study the vocabulary and, and listen to the way people that speak the language really well, the way that they talk, and emulate that. And then, then you can start to be creative with your own expression and the words you choose to use, you know, even in the English, even in your own language. To me, it's, a, it's about that. And it's an also, like I said, the beauty of it for me is, the, is, is finding a way to, uh, to have that self-expression your own emotional content along with the support factor that makes that lets everybody else in the band get to that place too and that i still say is the, is the, if there's an issue of, of younger drummers today it's the lack of understanding the support concept you know it's all about you know the notes and the and what's going on technically or or you know, from the from the sense of, of that physical ability, and not so much about what, how what they're doing is really affecting the person they're playing behind, you know, from a musical standpoint, from you know everything from dynamics, volume, uh, touch, you know, the 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 atmosphere that is created from the drums, how much sustain is going on, you know, versus tightness. Is it you know, there's all that stuff is a is a direct uh, display of e of emotion, because if it's the wrong texture, it doesn't allow the emotion to happen. If something is tight and contained, it makes it makes it edgy sounding, and it makes everybody else want to play that way. But if you're playing a if you're playing something that's supposed to be, you know, full and smooth and 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 create a, a texture for somebody to be comfortable on top of and you got to understand how to get that out of your instrument and so it becomes a becomes that self-expression of the feeling you want to create for yourself first and then for you know the other musicians so it's there's so much involved you know to me that it's it becomes you know it's a never-ending quest you know to figure it out at least for me it is I think it depends on what the ideal is of the group that you're playing with. I mean, I, I 
there are certain times and, and situations and, and musical places that, that rules are, are necessary. I mean, you can't go into a pop gig and play like a jazz drummer. It's not going to work, vice versa. But I think in general, um, you tend to surround yourself with musicians that have the same rules as you do. Uh, the ideas of the rules anyway and the concepts that maybe set the rules. So, but I think spontaneity is, is part of the reason that we all play music. And I think it's a beautiful thing to have that. And I definitely enjoy the spontaneity. I'm more of a rule guy. I'm more of a, you know, I tend to go that way. But, but, I, but I definitely enjoy the little looser rules aspect as well. You know, when I play, I'm, I'm not there to, you know, to goof around or to smile all the time and, you know, be in this place that some drummers, I watch them and they're smiling all the time. They can play. And they're like, it's like, man, I commend. I, I, it's great. I can't do that. When I'm playing, it's like it's serious business for me. I have to really concentrate to, to pull off what I want to pull off. And even if it's simple, you know, just to be, you know, you, you do... Uh, you know, communication is the key and, and, you know, you always want to be looking and, and relaying the, the joy of it, too. So it's, you know, it's uh, loosening up a little bit as, you know, we could probably all do that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it's like anything else. It takes time. And that's why developing all these things young, at a young age, is you know, so important to do. Because, you know, at least I had a heck of a lot more time when I was young uh, than I do now. But that's what I spend my time practicing now, is things that I'm not comfortable at or that I can't do. I'm still trying to get my left foot working as well as my right, because I didn't grow up with double pedals or, you know, a double bass. And I didn't, so I didn't train this foot, you know. So it's that's that's kind of a little quest of my own. I don't I don't intend to be, you know, you know, the next Thomas Lang or anything like that. Because those guys really spent a lot of time, you know. Not to mention a lot of the heavy the heavy metal guys, the speed metal guys. That, I mean, it's like you have to work out like <laughs> six times a week to play that music, you know. So it's it's past my uh, goal or desire to to want to do that. But but it certainly is, you know, for me it's fun to um, to work on on the stuff that I can't do. So yeah, you know, getting the left foot up there and and messing around with you know that that kind of heel toe thing too has always been something I've played around with. But like I said, you need the time, you know, to really spend the time that it would that, that it would take to fully develop as much as I'd like, let's say.
I may plan the structure or the concept, especially when I have to play a, a few solos a night, I'll think about, you know, ahead of time, you know, do I want to maybe play with, you know, Blastics on this solo or, you know, in this solo, do I want to stick more to, you know, rhythmic, real tight rhythmic stuff or in another solo with a similar vibe, do I want to loosen it up and play a lot of loose phrasing? So in that sense, if I have to play a lot of solos, I will think uh, form-wise, you know, com com compositionally or, you know, but never content. You're basically writing a song on the drums, on the spot, and you're, you're following a, a rule set, is that word, it, it, <laughs> of building, you know, of taking something that you're starting and conceptually, you know, keeping going up like this and then maybe you go back down who knows depends on the feeling at the moment that's part of the spontaneity the beauty of it if you're talking about me specifically then i tend to structure solos like that and that's that's based on what i've always heard all my favorite players do as i was growing up you know and that kind of structure sometimes not though sometimes i will be completely free and you know and have a free section and then structure and then who knows but i try to keep it spontaneous spontaneous Thanks for watching. I hope it uh, was enjoyable. And um, as always, try to make uh, great music. You know, spend the time developing, and you'll be happy as a player and uh, make it positive. Have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> cool. Um, All right. <laughs>